please, please check out my second channel, Liji Love Reviews, where I review really cool, colorful clothing inspired by Harajuku Japan as well as South Korea street fashion. Please check out my second channel. The link is down there in the description box below. I really hope you guys will enjoy it. Thanks so much, guys. comments already girl mm -mm. <laughs> oh no I don't know about all of you but I'm in the mood for some corn on the cob and to get called mom how many of you are with me tell me in the comments <laughs> hello my dears and welcome to my channel today we're going to be doing something a little bit different because today I'm gonna to be turning myself into Yoon Bum from KS by Kogi that was that sentence was a lot okay <laughs> So I'm turning myself into a character named Yoon Bum from a series called K.S. And I am not going to say the name of the actual series because, girl, I don't want my video to get flagged or reported because of the words in the title of that series. If you want to know what the series is called, simply look up the name Yoon Bum. KS and Google will be happy to tell you. Please do not say the name of the series in the comments below. Please help mama out, okay? <laughs> so, this is how this video came to be, okay? If you're new to this channel, hello, my name is Liz, I'm a published author here in America, and my viewers have the tendency of comparing me to other people, saying that I look like Cardi B, saying that I look like Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. And since I posted this picture on Instagram, you guys have been comparing me to Yoon Bum for obvious reasons. Thank you to the first person who ever said I look like Yoon Bum. You started a trend that nobody needed. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> and because of this phenomenon on my channel, so many of you have been asking me to turn myself into people like Cardi B and Levi Ackerman from Attack on Titan, which I've done so far. Check it out. It was a freaking good time. But you guys have been asking me to turn myself into you, mom. And I thought that today, right now, would be the perfect time because KS has recently finished. And by recently, I mean a few months ago. A mom was late to the party. I'm sure a lot of you are already over it. You already digested the ending. You're done with it. You on to the next you're like thank you next thank you ne no not me not me because i'm a published author i work from home and i'm a slave to my work that i love very much but because of that i don't have a lot of time to be reading stuff okay so i'm very late to the party i just recently read the ending and i don't know if i'm upset yet i gotta digest it and i thought let me go through the emotions with all of you, my precious YouTube babies. Hashtag love my babies. So today, I'm going to turn myself into Yoon Bum and then going to rant. This video is not going to make all of you happy. I warn you right now, those of you who hate the series are going to be very upset when I compliment the series, okay? And those of you who love the series and your total stands and you freaking love to pair up Yoon Bum and Sang Woo might not be happy with everything that I have to say but please keep in mind these are my opinions my experiences and how I feel about this series okay I feel good and I feel bad about this series it does not mean that my feelings invalidate how you feel about this series if you hate it or love it beautiful mwah, boys girls and everybody in between do you all of your opinions and you're entitled to your opinions however i do ask that if you do not like my opinions please don't attack me in the comments i beg of you please do not attack me i want to be able to have fun and share my opinions with you guys and being attacked kind of puts a damper on that you know what i mean let's just have fun and be respectful in the comments if someone disagrees with you all right all right, my YouTube babies, no fighting, okay? No fighting. Let's get started. So, I'm completely prepared, okay? I've got my glue sticks. Those of you who are confused, you need this to cover up your eyebrows like the drag queens do, and then conceal it so you do not have eyebrows because Yoon Bum has these thin pencil eyebrows, okay? And we gotta draw those on. So, we gotta get rid of our real eyebrows with some glue stick from the dollar store, bees. I got my 
Ding! Jacqueline Hill palette. Girl, look at that shit. I'm like a real beauty guru. So, she a little dirty. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to use some of the colors in this palette to be able to contour my eye sockets and my nose and so on. Because Yoon Bum kind of has this deep set eye thing going on. He's very depressed. And also, I'm going to need some of this black for the under eye part. Because he has this L from Death Note moment going on underneath his eyes. And I also have this basic as hell contour palette. I don't think it belongs to a brand. And I'm gonna use a lot of these browns and beiges and whites to be able to contour my jaw and give myself some cheekbones cause your girl has a very round face. She ain't got no cheekbones, okay? But uh, I think you bum do. So that's what we're gonna do today. That's what I have. And we're gonna play with it. We're gonna have some fun beach. We're gonna contour our face and become you bum. Your favorite hostage. All right, that wasn't a good joke. Sorry. Let's start off by giving us a nice eyebrowless look, okay? Oh, look at that. I still have some eyebrows on it from the last time I used it, which was when I became Levi Ackerman. So, I wanted to start off by um, talking about what KS is actually about, for those of you who do not know the series. It was published on a website called Lezen. They post a whole bunch of comics by a whole bunch of different artists. You can read some for free, others you have to pay to read. KS was one of those that had a couple of free chapters in the beginning and the rest of it you had to pay for. So, KS takes place in South Korea and follows the adventures of Yoon Bum, a very lonely college student who really does not seem to have any friends. He's really, really obsessed with and in love with this guy named Sang Woo, who was a classmate of his, but they also went to the military together. For those of you who do not know, when you live in Korea, you need to go to the military. If you are a man, you need to go for, I think, two years or so, serve your country, then come back home. In the military, bad things almost happened to Yoon Bum and Sang Woo was there to save him. And ever since that day, Yoon Bum has been absolutely creepy and obsessed with Sang Woo to the point that he has to break into Sang Woo's house because he just has to be near him. He wants to smell his pillow. He wants to be a freaking creep, okay? But when he gets to Sang Woo's house, he discovers a very ominous door that leads to a very creepy basement where he discovers Sang Woo's deep, dark secret that he is not a good person. In fact, uh, he kind of has a lady down there. And um, Sang Woo finds Yoon Bum in the basement. And from then on in the story, Yoon Bum is trying to escape this absolute creepy person, Sang Woo. And there you go. That's the gist of what the story is about. Okay? So <laughs> that's my new life. Eyebrows with glue on them. I'm kind of living for it. It's a look, right? It's a look. Ew. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you might be you might be wondering what would make me pick up this story, okay? So the thing is you guys ask me quite often <laughs> If I did not become an author, if I never got published, if I wasn't a working artist and didn't do YouTube on the side, what would I be doing? The answer might surprise you. More than my eyebrows at this moment? Maybe. So, <laughs> if I did not become an artist, I would have become a forensic scientist. And if I didn't do that, because I really love psychology and I studied psychology in college, I would have become a criminal psychologist. Yep. So, <laughs> you're welcome mom and dad. It's alright. It's all good. <laughs> the reason why I didn't, to be completely honest, is it makes you look at the world very differently, very negatively, and I kind of don't want to do that. I want to bring joy to people. And art is my actual true passion. I've been drawing my whole life and writing since I was four years old. This is what I'm meant to do, okay? So I just take what I really enjoyed learning about psychology and stuff and apply it to my writing. So moving on, because I have that interest, you know, I wanted to go into that field once upon a time. Um, learning about a comic that might be about 
I wanted to read it. I was really, really freaking curious. And you know, right off the bat, I was pretty drawn in. I was like, I think it's written pretty well, is what I was thinking reading the first few chapters. I'm like, I'm here for it. It's kind of scary. And it gets to a point, it really does get so freaking scary. Like, seeing what Yoon Bum goes through, and I, there are so many words I want to use, and I can't because I'm afraid of. YouTube flagging this video, so please forgive me if it sounds like I'm pausing a lot or my vocabulary is horrible. It's I'm literally stopping myself from using certain words. So, what Yoon Bum is going through in the story is very reminiscent to what other people, you know, poor things, you know, God be with them, who have actually experienced um, this sort of situation. It's it was really dark, really scary, and I really wanted to read it, not because of morbid curiosity, I just wanted to see him escape. I wanted him to escape, I wanted to see him go to the cops and just be free and just like tattle on this man that just absolutely needs to go to jail. Like he needs to go to jail for the crimes he's committed. It was just so freaking scary and every time I finished reading a chapter I was just like shook I was a mess I was like oh no <laughs> the psychological warfare that Sang Woo uses to keep Yoon Bum in this house was so scary and in a sense pretty realistic it honestly was especially when you learn about similar cases you know what I mean very realistic and also what he did physically to keep you and bum in this house really really scary so in that respect the author did a really great job like they made me feel fear like i actually felt fear i was actually scared oh no i forgot to put the powder on the last time i did this you guys were like you made a mistake you made a mistake you gotta put the powder on after you put on the glue you have to set it and forget it. Oh my god, I completely forgot. Hopefully it is not too late. Oh no. I really hope I'm not too late. <laughs> oh. This might be okay. This might, might be okay. I am not good at this. So in that respect, the author did a great job. They actually made me feel fear. The same kind of fear I'm feeling right now, looking at myself with these, oh, nasty, nasty, clumpy eyebrows. Can I put a second layer? Can I put a second layer? Oh, no. Oh, bitch, I think I did it. I think I got a second layer. Okay. Anyway, moving on. So in that respect, I think the author really succeeded because I felt like they had a pretty good handle on fear, on on horror. It's really difficult to write a horror story and I don't think everybody understands what scary actually is or how to utilize the silence of a comic to be able to make someone feel fear. Like It's very difficult. You don't have music, you don't have sound effects, you know what I mean? So if you could actually read a novel with no pictures and feel fear, you, you're reading a good book. If you can read a comic, okay, and they know how to utilize that space, those panels, those page composition. Oh, girl, you're reading a good comic. Good for you. And <laughs> so, that's how I officially felt during the first few chapters. But then it got to a point that it began to fall apart for me. And that's, and that's kind of what I wanted to rant about at this point before I continue talking about what I liked about the story, which is how I want to end this video, talking about the things that I enjoyed about the story. I really wanted to discuss a couple things that I don't think people are really pointing out, in my opinion, that really, really upset me as a reader, okay, and really took me out of the story in certain scenes. So, unfortunately, that's what I'm going to be talking about next. Okay, in this video, I apologize to any of you 
who are going to get upset at me and are going to disagree with me, you are entitled to your opinion. Please respect mine and please understand that even though I am a writer, I am published, but anything that I have to say is not me saying I'm a better writer than Kugi. Absolutely not. Also, what the heck was that voice? Any opinions I have is just the opinions of a reader who really enjoyed the story. Okay, it is not me saying I'm a better writer than Kugi, that I could have written the story better than them. Absolutely freaking not. It is not me saying that. It's just me saying, as a reader, I wish I got a little bit more. That's all. Warning, there's going to be a couple of spoilers. Um, because in order to really share my opinion, I'm sorry to all of you who haven't read the story but really want to watch this video. So I'm going to start using some of these light browns and so on and so forth to start contouring my eye sockets and my nose to get that you bum look. So like I was saying, right, I think that up until that point, I think that Kugi had a lot of the story already planned out. That's my theory because everything seemed nice and planned out. Everything still made sense and so on and so forth. They really kept track of all the details really well. And, um... They did take some breaks here and there, and their reasoning for taking breaks and going on hiatus and stuff was they wanted to plan out and figure out what was going to happen next in the story. That's already a, a, a red flag for me personally as a writer. So I feel like Kugi used up all their pre-written material, all the material they had written before they got published. I feel like they used it all up. And it, in my opinion, it begins to show because they begin to change details that they had early on in the story. And this is when I became a little upset as a reader, okay? I'm going to give you, I, I want to say, the biggest, most important inconsistency in the story. An inconsistency so terrible that it literally eventually made me fall out of love with the story. I did eventually come back to finish reading it, but there was a time where I stopped reading it because I was like, that detail was so freaking important, you changed it midway through the story. And now that buildup, that anticipation that I had wasn't there anymore because they ruined it. Anyway, so this is the detail, okay? At the beginning of the story, you meet the two main cops, the old cop and the young cop. So old cop has been in Sangwoo's neighborhood for some time and he's actually pretty close to Sangwoo after Sangwoo lost his parents. Young cop is brand new to that police department. So he just met Sangwoo for the first time and already got a bad feeling about Sangwoo. Those police officer instincts, beach. So what ended up happening, right, is you learn that Sangwoo's parents passed away in a very suspicious way. Again, I'm trying to avoid certain words because I do not want this video to get flagged, okay? So the old cop says both Sangwoo's mother and father were found in his house no longer with us, okay? And that there was not enough evidence found to really have any real suspects. And then a young cop is like, well, I know that everyone believes it was a, a break and entrance gone wrong, but young cop feels like it looked staged. He feels like it was made to look like someone broke into the house but that somebody didn't really break into the house. He believes it was an inside job, as in somebody who had access to the house. The only other person to have access to the house would be their son, Sang Wu. And old cop was like, oh, hold on, bitch, who are you trying to blame? Uh-uh, wait a second. Are you trying to blame my boy, Sang Wu? So, because he doesn't want to think that Sang Wu would be the one who committed the crime because he was crying and he kind of like sees his own child in Sang Wu. The thing is, in the real world, that's not how crimes are investigated. If you're a family, if you're a co-worker, you're a boyfriend, a girlfriend, you're going to be a suspect. If you have access to the house, you have a key to the house, you're going to be a suspect. But there's more. There's more. After the whole music festival scene and all that chaos, right? Sang Wu takes Yoon Bum into the mountains. And there is where he tells him, this is where my father is buried. 
let's talk about that for a second. In the first chapter, the police say they found both of Sang Woo's parents in the house. But now, in the middle of the story, she changes it up. She threw us the doozy, okay? And suddenly, the father is now in the mountains. What? Here's the thing, y'all, okay? If let's just pretend they didn't find the father in the house and they only found the mother in the house, guess who would be the first person suspected of the crime? Because they're not there. The father, her husband, would have been the first one to be a suspect because he wasn't there. They would have assumed that he fled the scene of the crime. They would not have assumed that he wasn't alive anymore. Why would they have assumed that? They had already said there wasn't a lot of evidence. Okay? Later on, they do show where the father was buried. And there is police tape. It was never mentioned earlier in the story that the father was found anywhere else but the house. Okay? <sighs> and here's another thing. They were talking about, oh, there wasn't enough evidence, so on and so forth. But here's the thing, right? They later show that the father met his demise because he was given things that you would give rats if you wanted to get rid of them in your house. They put it in his food. When they found the papa, God rest his soul, they would have done an autopsy, right? And wouldn't they have learned in that autopsy that he ingested that stuff? That's what I would think. That when they did an autopsy on him, they would have found that. And they would have been like, okay, so now the mama's passed. And now the papa's passed. And papa has uh, inedible rat substances um, in his belly. What they gave him to get rid of him was found in the washroom of their house. Who else would have access to that stuff in their house? Only the family members would have had access to that. Okay? Only the family members would have known where, where that was. Like, yeah, an intruder is going to cook a meal, put that stuff in it, and then force the father to eat it. That's not realistic. Somebody in the house did that. And for those of you who read the story, you know that the mother is the one who got rid of the father. So, that's another hole in what happened in the beginning of the story because both the parents did not pass away at the same time. The father went first, then the mother. Here, oh my God, it's so annoying because they made it seem like both of them passed at the same time and were found in the house at the same time. They were not found at the same time. The father went missing. That's what actually happened and they did not say that the father went missing. They later found him in the mountains with not so good substances in his belly with food. Family fed him that food with that substance in it. Immediately when he was found, they should have suspected the family of doing this because they were the only ones who had access to that substance. It was in their washroom. That's number one. Number two, at the end of the story, they find the mother in the wall because Sang Woo put her there. So now my question is, why did they assume that the mother was no longer alive? The author forgot. She forgot all those details. She forgot all those details and allowed us to read a story with inconsistent details that make absolutely zero sense. Okay? It makes no sense. That doesn't make any sense, guys. I wonder who else noticed these inconsistencies and stopped reading the story because of the inconsistencies because that's why I stopped reading it. It was getting me out of the story, out of the greatness that I was experiencing because these details did not line up. So remember earlier when I said that I felt like the first part of the story up until the music festival, Kugi had already planned out before they got published? Then the next chunk was, okay, I need to come up with some new details um, because I ran out of all my pre-written material. I've got to come up with something because the publishers are pushing me to really get something out quickly because 
the story is doing really really well they got to keep up momentum but i feel like rushing the writing is where the inconsistencies came and during that second arc in my opinion is when a lot of people stopped reading people felt the way that i felt where you're like i want to be scared i want to believe this story stop forgetting details <laughs> you know what i mean oh boy and then came what i like to call the third arc so in the third arc girl by this point a lot of people have jumped off the delightful ks train a lot of people gave up on the story i feel like part three the whole third arc that arc in my opinion was the oh my gosh we lost so many freaking readers we need to get them back let's just make this into a boy's love story between the hostage and the dude that controls him with fear around that time is when i stopped reading the story like to be quite honest with you i stopped reading right before that and then i kept seeing memes online about that freaking corn on the cob scene and at that point i was like okay what the heck is going on in ks i kind of just need to come back just to know what all these memes are talking about <laughs> and i came back and i was like this is out of freaking control when did this become a boy's love story oh my gosh it was just so ridiculous Sang Woo's personality completely changed. It just didn't make any freaking sense. You can call it character development. I don't. I call that character inconsistency because it just happened all of a freaking sudden, in my opinion. It was just all of a sudden. And even when Sang Woo would threaten somebody, they didn't care. They weren't afraid of him. Like, remember that time that Yoon Bum brought his friend over, his old school friend? He is over here threatening her and stuff. Old Song Wu from earlier in the series would not have let that woman go. I was bracing myself for it. I was getting afraid for her for no reason because he didn't do anything. He was not even trying. She was not even threatened. She was like, oh, please, you're such a freaking loser. Get a life. That's literally what she was saying to him. It was ridiculous. It did not make any sense for Song Wu to react the way that he did. He became really clingy. He became so freaking different it was weird and it was honestly in my opinion just their attempt to get the readers back what do you guys think you guys want to keep reading you guys want to keep reading ks now that there's romance in it guys read the story that's that's what happened and then the very end was well we got to end the story now we lost a lot of readers. How can we end the story? This ending's been done before. It's really stereotypical and not exciting and really, really, really predictable. All right, let's do it. We got to end this darn story. And that is how I feel about the ending of KS. I felt it was rushed. I thought it was predictable. It made me really disappointed. There were a lot of details I wish they would have gone more into. And finding the mother in the wall wasn't shocking for the reasons that they had hoped it would be shocking. It was shocking because it was just another hole in the plot. Like I mentioned before, the mother going missing, she would have been a suspect. They wouldn't have assumed she had passed away. She would have been suspected. They would have done an autopsy on the papa that they found in the mountains because he ate food with that substance in it. She would have been a suspect. They would have been looking for her. Finding her in the wall would have would have been surprising if they had been looking for her as a suspect all this time and then we realized she's not even alive. That would have been like, oh shoot, because all the time we're looking for her, she's on the run. You know what I mean? Like that would have been like that would have made more sense to me. Like, that's how I feel. So let me stop dragging the story and talk about what I actually enjoyed about the story. Cause there's a lot. With all of its flaws, it did have things that I really enjoyed about it. One of which is, I really appreciated all the time and detail that Kugi put into Sang Woo and Yoon Bum's past. They had really good backstories, backstories that actually really explained 
who they were and why they were the way they were, which is excruciatingly important. People don't realize it. it's so freaking important to have a good backstory. You can't just have characters act the way these two characters act for no reason. And thankfully, Kugi had enough sense in them to really flesh them out and give them these home lives that really made a lot of sense to me. They made a lot of sense. I really appreciated the details of, about their past, okay? It made a lot of freaking sense and really made you feel um, sympathy and empathy for both of them. Even though they both made very disgusting, horrifying decisions, just like I did when I added too much brown to my nose. Oh no. I think I put too much brown. Forgive me, okay? I'm starting to look like a Tim Burton character. <laughs> very lonely characters and it just all made so much sense as to why they turned out the way they did. Also, I will never ever hear the song strumming my pain with his fingers the same way ever again. Whenever I hear that song, I actually go, oh my god, it makes me think of Song Woo because in so many key points in the story, that song was playing and so that song has become like a representation of Song Woo for me. So, <laughs> you know, so there's that. It, that was a really cool detail. I really appreciated that. It was so fun. And you remember that scene when you and Bum tried to escape and we thought he did it because Sang Woo had left us for a little bit and you and Bum was like, oh girl, here's my chance to escape. I'm so freaking scared, but here's my chance. And the moment he opened that door, you read the lyrics of the song because Sang Woo was right outside listening to his headphones. Listening to that song, I was dead. Oh no, I was freaking out. That scene was so scary. That scene was so well done. But it was also from the beginning of the series. The part of the series that I'm sure you, um, Kugi had already planned out before getting published. Now it's on to the hair, y'all. Ooh. Something I could not understand is why the cops were so incompetent. If they would have done their job properly, Sang Woo would have been caught. But Kugi made sure every single cop in the series was an actual idiot and was actually really incompetent and would never, ever be able to catch the obvious um, culprit, which was Sang Woo, okay? And also, Kugi wrote every person that Yoon Bum ever encountered as a total a-hole. Like, he's here asking for help and you're over here pushing him away when he's literally begging people for help saying, please, this guy has me hostage, please save me. And people are literally pushing him away saying, I'm trying to listen to the music, get a life, loser. Like, Kugi purposely wrote these people, the police officers and the civilians of poor South Korea, okay? They, they purposely wrote these people in such a way that Sangwoo would never get caught and Yoon Bum would never be saved. If they actually wrote realistically and wrote realistic characters, you know, side characters rather, um, Yoon Bum could have been saved. Oh no, that's not Yoon Bum hair. <laughs> that's just bum hair. That's just, hi, I'm kind of homeless. <laughs> you ain't never gonna keep your man looking like this. Yoon Bum was so afraid that Sang Woo was gonna leave him for a woman at one point. You know what, bitch? You know what you gotta do? You gotta do what James Charles do and use the James Charles palette. Okay, so I'm gonna give Yoon Bum like a, a beauty makeover because this is kind of getting sad. And why the heck was everybody so darn mean to Yoon Bum? It just, it was just too convenient. All these civilians and the police officers were all written that way just to keep the story going. If God forbid somebody was to come up to you crying and screaming saying, please help me, please call the police, I'm being held against my will, please help me, even if you think they're crazy, you'd still call the cops. I know I would. Yep, that'll help you keep your mans. You can't even tell I'm happy. You can't even tell I'm smiling. Oh, oh no. These eyebrows limit all of my joy. But this eyeshadow though, oh girl. <laughs> oh girl. 
you know, for some reason, you put a hat on and suddenly it kind of feels like a Sangwoo cosplay. Maybe I'm just tripping. Maybe I'm just going crazy. So that's it, guys. Did you enjoy the video? Do you want to see me turn myself into somebody else? Tell me down there in the comments below, guys. Did you enjoy KS? Do you agree with anything that I'm saying? Also, once again, please be kind to me in the comments, guys. Oh my goodness, what a video, what a trip. I thought this would take a lot less time. I talked your ear off. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next Thursday with a new freaking video. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so until next time, guys, please take care. God bless. And do not be afraid to nerd out. But do be afraid of breaking into people's houses and going into the basement because you might find something you don't want to find.